At each end of the airport, the state is building a rather extensive throughway road system, which will then feed you into a north-south road, which we call the Spine Road. And from this Spine Road, you exit off into each of the separate terminals, and the road system then feeds you into this bottom road, which we call the in-planing road. And a, a uh, incoming passenger would get out of his car at this point, check his baggage in here, and either have his car parked or if someone drops him off, take the car on off. At this point, he loses his baggage. It goes into the, to the airline system. He goes up the escalators, two of which will be at every entrance. And for example, in the larger Brenna terminal, there are 12 such entrance ways spaced around through the half loop. Now, on the site as it exists now, I understand this escalator is installed. That's uh, gotten that far, at least. The metallic part of it. The canopy isn't on it yet. But uh, uh, the escalator is now being tested. One of them, one of 12, is being tested. This is the, the airline passenger operational area where you'll find ticketing. Also, you can't see it very well back there, but there's a carousel where you'll collect your baggage on the way out, which we'll hit in a moment and you progress on through the terminal in terms of being processed for tickets. If you're already ticketed, you walk straight from the escalator to the edge of the building, which we term the air sign, and out onto loading bridges into the aircraft. Is this yet constructed? In a rough form, the, what the concrete slab is in, and, uh, and these are this center portion, which will be um, old restaurants, uh, restrooms, um, barber shops, um, sale shops, and so forth are roughed in. Well, Johnny, we're looking at a cross-sectional area of the south end of Terminal Loop 2W. This is the Braniff Terminal. And this is a full half loop, which we'll see later, and is about seven-tenths of a mile long from one area to the other. On the left, where the crane is parked, is the service road area. And incidentally, we're standing in, in the north and south service road area here, which is the separate road se roadway system from that the passengers will use. The standard sticking up in the air will support apron lighting. In other words, light uh, to uh, shine down on the aircraft parking area, which is to the left of the building in this case. You can see the second level where the up and down stringers are located. This will be the passenger level of the, of the terminal. The third level that you see here is essentially filled with utilities, transformers, air handling units, and this sort of thing. Now the air trans uh, system, which we see here, I understand there are no tracks because air trans runs on a guideway, but uh, is this part of the, uh, of, of the terminal we're going to start it or complete? How far along is it? Well, the guideway is installed, and uh, Thought Aeronautics, who has the contract to build the air trans system, has been testing. They don't happen to be testing today, but they've been testing the, the vehicle that will be used. Now, Air Trans moves people, and this side is the passenger side, and it will move uh, passengers going from one terminal to another. Uh, this side, and you'll see in the configuration of the guideway when we get out on the site how the tracks split, is for baggage, trash, mail, employees, and so forth. So the two systems, while they use the same guideway and, and the same area here, are essentially separate systems, passengers and uh, materials. What is the furthest uh, passenger would have to walk from the in-planing road to the far end of the building where it gets on the airplane? Well, the, the cross-sectional area of the building is somewhere between 100 and 150 feet. Uh, if he got off on the bottom road, he would have and got on the nose of the airplane here, he would have a total of about 100 yards to walk to get to the tail end of a 747. John, we were talking about the tall structure of the stair towers. One of those contains an elevator and the other stairs, as we discussed over in the model. Now here, and that's just to the right of the scaffolding. Uh, is that, well, that little out tower in front of the building, the, the vertical risers that right. go up, the tall square structure. Uh, in front of those is the road system. The upper one, deep cleaning. The lower one, where the van is parked down here, in cleaning. If he parked his car in the short-term parking lot uh, and 
then went to the escalator and got on the plane, and then when he came back to get his baggage, wouldn't he have a problem, or at least would he have to carry his own baggage back to his car? Or is there a provision? He, uh, he may choose to do that. I'm sure that the airlines are going to have baggage hold stations here, but it would mean if he didn't want to carry it that he'd have to get his car and come back out this deplaning road, which is, he's, is the only way out anyway. So he would be traveling this route. But I would expect the airlines would have some sort of a baggage hold system to uh, take care of that situation. Would this be the uh, road, I assume, that the, uh, the uh, taxis and ground transportation vehicles would drop passengers off? Yes. And it's expected that there'd be quite a lot of that kind of traffic, I suppose. Yes. Uh, however, there will be no service vehicle, trucks or delivery vehicles of any sort in, in this system. There is a separate... Uh, which we call a separate uh, service road system that keeps trucks and, and the heavy traffic other than well, what you normally expect for passenger delivery off of this system. That would be the traffic that serves the airport yes. internally. Yes, it, it operates on a separate road system and the trucks and so forth will operate out on the air side of the terminal in this space. The airport is so big it's hard to see. The airplane side of the horseshoe shaped terminal is so vast you have to turn your head to look from one end to the other. This particular terminal is the Braniff Terminal. You can see how huge it is. What boggles the mind is that there are three more just like it to be completed next summer, and ultimately there will be 13 of these monsters along the Spine Road. Inside the terminal, it still doesn't look like much of anything. There are dozens of men to, of different trades and crafts working here and there on their own job, knowing what they're supposed to do, but not necessarily how it fits into the big picture. Standing at one end and looking through the glass at the other gives you still another perspective as to the size of the thing. Outside, the area where the planes will land and taxi and hook up to the terminals is still in pretty rough shape, but Tom Sullivan, the executive director of the airport, is a very determined man, and he is sticking to the July 1973 completion date.